Hey, what's up guys? It's Sal here and this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. I was live at the launch of the Note 10 and also we were able to get a hands-on experience just before this device was launched. So this is my review of the Note 10 24 hours after it was launched. And this time Samsung is releasing two different versions, the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus. And if you want to skip ahead in this video, I've provided timestamps in the description of this video to find different sections. Without further ado, let's get to the video. First off, talking about the display, the regular or the smaller Note 10 comes with 6.3 inch FHD Plus display, dual hybrid SIM and a single SIM on the 5G version which may not come to Nigeria. The front camera is a 10 megapixel f2.2 sensor and on the back we've got a triple camera setup, 16 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide which I tested and it was just as wide as the K20 Pro. 12 megapixel wide angle lens with dual apertures at 1.5 and 2.4 and then we've got the 12 megapixel telephoto lens with an aperture of f2.1. Both displays look really good and I really liked how it looked curved, you know, edge to edge and it's definitely one of the most attractive, if not the most attractive phones I've held this year. Still on the Note 10, we've got a minimum storage of 256 GB across board and 8 GB of RAM on the Note 10. The battery on the Note 10 is 3500 mAh and it's got three microphones, bottom, top and the rear. And of course, there is no headphone jack. On the Big Brother, the Note 10 Plus, which I have here, it's quite bigger at 6.8 inch WQHD Plus. 1440p and it's bigger than the regular Note 10 of course. You've got the same camera on the front, a 10 megapixel f2.2 camera. However, we've got four camera sensors on the back making the Note 10 have a total of five cameras. Five cameras. The specs of the four cameras on the back are pretty much the same as the um, regular Note 10, um, three of them. But here we've got an additional camera on the back which is a depth vision camera to aid portrait mode and also for AR. One thing that is unique about both cameras is something called zoom in audio. Basically, when you're recording video, you can zoom in and it will capture sound in the distance. And I tested it out and it actually worked quite well. As far as storage situation, the Note 10 Plus has a whopping 12 gigabytes of RAM while it has the same list storage of 256 gigabytes and 512 gigabytes option and you can expand it with one terabytes. This was the rage last year, but it's pretty normal these times. Um, here you have 4,300 milliamp hour battery and according to my source, he streamed YouTube for 10 hours straight and his battery only got to 10% after like, wow, that's crazy. Since I got mine from the launch day, I didn't plug it in and I had 13% battery low so that's something to note um there's no headphone jack as well and in the box of all of them the commercial box that you're going to get you only have a USB-C earpiece and this is basically to encourage people to buy the galaxy bot according to my source again and this is like taking off of the page of apple's books um with regards to airpods another reason samsung gave for taking away the headphone jack is to make the device slimmer now it did look slimmer samsung also says a third reason for the removal is to add 100 milliamp hours to the battery and to improve the haptic feedback. I actually posted about the haptic feedback and it actually felt very intuitive. But basically, this is just to tell you to get the Galaxy Buds. That's, that's what they are all trying to tell you, get the Galaxy Buds. On the bottom, it's just a microphone port, USB-C port, speaker and the S Pen. There's nothing to the right side and the left side has the side button and the volume keys. They call it the side button because you power off the device with a long press and a long press now gets you big speed. So to turn off the device, you have to go to the notifications to do so. But uh, this side button is actually remappable. Um, you can actually remap it to power off your device and it can be remapped to launch the camera. Basically, you can remap a double tap and a single tap which can function to even open apps as well. I think this is a good feature. During my usage, because I'm so used to the power button being at the right, I couldn't get used to this placement so quickly. Um, I probably will get used to it later. Um, there's another microphone and another speaker on the top. So this is a stereo speaker, of course, fine-tuned by AKG. And apart from how loud it sounded, it really sounded great. The Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus come in five colors, Aura Glow, which is the main attraction, Aura Black, and the Aura White. Now, these three are for both of them. And then you get Aura Blue, which are not available in Nigeria and I think that they are rooted for the 5G version. Now the, this guy is a fingerprint magnet because it's all glass and it's Gorilla Glass 6 to be specific but I got a leather case for this device which actually looks very snug. Now Samsung about performance Samsung is prioritizing 
faster processor they are also talking about having a maximum storage as well as 12 gigabytes of ram which you would get on like a laptop with battery optimization with wireless power share samsung is really trying to liken this phone to a laptop replacement the processor is a 7 nanometer processor and in the uk market is exynos 9825 chip which is similar to the 865 processor and this is the same 7 nanometer gang with the iphone 10s and 10s max and the high-end huawei devices in the kirin lineup that are coming soon battery like i mentioned is looking to be great um 3500 milliamp hours for the note 10 4300 milliamp hours for the note 10 plus i have here it is capable of 45 watt fast charging and it doesn't come in the box, but you have to buy the adapter separately. I have an 85 watts and I'm going to be testing it. And the Note 10 Plus can wirelessly charge an accessory like the Galaxy Buds and even your phone. And uh, the only problem is that you may not be able to charge it when it's below 30%. Other things that you get include Bluetooth 5.0, NFC, and of course, it is IP68 water resistance to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. Now, as far as the S Pen, it did get some improvements as well. Samsung says the improvements here are to aid productivity. And one of the main improvements that the new S Pen comes with is air gesture or air actions as Samsung brands it. Um, you can press the button and wave the pen to the right uh, or to the left to control and swipe on the screen for its functionalities. This works mostly in the camera app, making the S Pen some sort of remote control, mainly for changing camera modes, changing the camera functions and also zooming in and out. Other improvements of the S Pen are in terms of note taking where you can quickly transcribe handwritten text or handwritten scribbles into text that you can copy and paste. This can be done easily just by touching. You can also easily screen record sections and use the S Pen to draw and there are more options like linking it to Windows, making a phone more like a laptop with a partnership with Microsoft and using the S Pen as a remote for presentations. This is something I personally find useful. As far as the cameras, the wide angle lenses are 123 degrees wide, just 3 degrees wider than the human eyes and I checked it again it's similar to the K20 Pro which also has a similar processor like I mentioned. You still get all the normal slow motion and super slow motion features you get on the previous S10 devices um, Note 9 and as far as what is new it's basically live video focus mode where you get to choose up to four different backgrounds. You can even add a glitch. Then you also get dual image optical stabilization in the wide and telephoto lens. Image quality was quite good on this device. I thought the selfies were sharp and somehow smooth as well, but they were usable. Also, the images with the rear cameras are definitely worth it. Hey guys, so this is the front facing camera visual quality of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Let me know what you think about the front facing camera visual quality. It records stereo. It actually doesn't have the exposure thing I always complain about in my videos. Um, I think that this is actually a very, very dope camera. Uh, the way it looks on my face is actually somehow uh, smooth. It's a bit too smooth. But then again, uh, it doesn't have any of those artifacts or those exposure problems. And it actually looks very okay. I mean, like, it looks very good. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, the front facing camera video quality. And I'm going to change it to live focus now so you see how live focus looks like. All right, guys, so this is live focus on the front facing camera of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Um, it's actually blurring out everything in the background and keeping just me in focus. So let me know what you think about this video quality. I'm seeing a bit of lag here in the camera, but then again, I don't know how it's going to translate. Just let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. To unlock the Note 10, you've got your normal ultrasonic sensor and face recognition. As far as the pricing on the Note 10, the Note 10 starts at 3,500 Naira or $949, while the 10 Plus is 384,000 Naira or $1,099. I'll leave more information in the description so you can check it out. And if you have any questions, please drop them below. I'll be sure to respond. Do like this video if you found this video useful. Hit that subscribe button for more videos um, on the Note 10 and many more other tech. Um, turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.